Hey, horror fans, once again, it is me, the Horror Mize and Money GG. It is now day three for a Wild Egg Week, and this time we're going to review the horror movie called The Blood Harvest. <laughs> Uh, the Blood Harvest, uh, it's a 2016, uh, I guess you could saw it, a uh, 2016 American slasher film. Actually, I think it's actually North Island. I think it was made in there. It was written and directed by George Clark. The film stars Robert Rinder, Jean Paul Vanderville, and Rachel Galloway. Now, in this particular film, a, a disgraced nor <laughs> nor Northern Ireland cop uh, uh, has come back into the field to catch a serial killer who's who's just killed a, about a whole bunch of people, and he has to find a way to get his superiors to believe the theories that these are vampires that are killing these people. Well, that's what he thinks. <laughs> now, the way this film begins, we see this couple that gets attacked in some type of a uh, jogging area they're attacked by this guy well this guy gets attacked um, there's a whole bunch of people get attacked in this film and this film we see some guy in some type of uh, some type of a mass and he kills this person and we see there's two couples there in some type of a sewer system they both get killed one guy gets stabbed to death another one gets stabbed and gets the eye poked out uh, yeah that's some crazy shit <laughs> that happens in this film uh, then unfortunately, the guy, the main character, Jack, he has this theory, but unfortunately, uh, they don't believe him, so he gets fired. Several years later, we see more killings. I believe it's up to 39 people have been killed so far. So, uh, his boss, or his former boss, Hatcher, decides to bring Jack in to see if he can solve these murders, and that's basically what the film is about. Now, I, I guess maybe George Clark was influenced by the Texas Chainsaw Massacre because we do get vibes of that in there and some other hor American horror films that he has in here. But I, I kind of did like what he was trying to attempt here. You know, uh, you know, we had some decent practical effects in here. Uh, I, I thought they did a good job like that. I actually thought that Robert Rainier was pretty good as Jack. You know, he's a man that's you know, frustrated and he really wants to solve these mothers. The acting is what you suspect in a film like this. It's, it's okay. Nothing brilliant, anything like that. Like I said, my only main problem with the film is that it just kind of drags on a long period of time. You know, uh, there's the scenes where we actually do see the two killers confront each other and they scream and yell for almost like five minutes. It's like, okay, we get that. You know, it's nice that we see the killers up front, but, you know, we don't really need five minutes of them going, ah, ooh, ah, ooh. And that it takes on for a good five minutes. So he needs to learn how to not drag scenes out. I also like the fact that when we actually find out who the killers are in the reveal, it's a little bit different. So I give George credit for trying something different right here. Like I said, it's it's film nice. I also like the fact that obviously when towards the end of the film we get this uh, blooper roll. <laughs> And you can see that they actually had a good time uh, filming this film. So I give them credit because they had a good time making this film. It took what they were doing seriously. And, you know, you can only do so much of the type of budget you have for this type of film. But they actually did a good job in making this film and getting their point across. Like I said before, the only problem I have is that some scenes are just dragged too long. Like, I believe um, there's a scene where, um, I think the guy, what's this guy's name again? Uh, Jack. You know, he's in the woods, and we think that the killer is actually seeing Jack, but there's not. He's not seeing Jack. He's just like, just like switching back and forth between the killer and Jack, but I don't get that part. You know, there was one thing I didn't like of that. If you're going to uh, make your scenes make sense, then he should be in the scene where he actually sees the killer but it's just switching back and forth when they transition back between the killer and who he has locked up and we see jack standing there with his gun in his hand it's like okay we see that but um not making sense there but other than that like i said this is a decent film like i said before great nice some good nice practical effects uh, uh, some of the fight scenes that we have, uh, unfortunately, were not choreographed pretty that way. And uh, I guess when they make this, I guess in post, they did a good job in creating the hits and make it sound a little believable. But, you know, you, you only can do what you work with right here. But like I said before, it's a decent film. It's a nice film. So I recommend you give it a watch. So there you have it for day three for... Um, 
Wild Eye Week, The Blood Harvest. This is the 2016 Northern Ireland film, not the other Blood Harvest that has a clown in it. Just want to make sure you get that right, because some people might take a look at the clown. I don't know if that's a Wild Eye film, but that's clown. There's no clowns in this one. So there you have it. That is my review for day three of The Blood Harvest. Hope you did enjoy it. And if you did, please give it a like and share, because that will help out with the YouTube algorithm. Also, if you have seen The Blood Harvest, please leave your comments in the comment section below and tell me what you thought about the film. Also, if you're new here, please hit that subscriber button and ring that notification bell. That way you'll be notified anytime when I put a new video such as this one. Once again, my name is Lamont Smith, better known as the Horror Miser Monty G. And always remember that horror rules. Ha -ha. I'll see you in my next video. I'm out.